Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the official guide to the GRE revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to prepare for the exam. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 145 and today is our day number 27. Page 125 which is the beginning of the sets, sets of questions that they give you. Set number one is pretty straightforward, pretty simple questions. Especially number one is a very straightforward question. Uh, also, the exact same question also appeared in the old GRE, this book that I'm holding in my hand here, the 10th edition. So if you wish to watch my old video when I made the uh, quantitative to comparison questions, uh, 210 quantitative to comparison questions, uh, the videos that I have on the YouTube or out of this book, all, there are seven exams, each exam has 30 quantitative to comparison questions and therefore there are 210 of them and I have taped all of them, all 210. So if you're interested in watching the old video, you will find it at this, just to type in here, also watch GRE Math Day 13, page 135. So if you just search for this thing, GRE Math uh, Day 135, you'll find it. Here's a question. We are buying the bicycle for $75, we're going to repair it for $27, we spent $27 in repairing it, altogether it costs $102, and then the question goes on to say that uh, after repairing the bike, she sold the bike for 40% more than the total amount that she spent buying and repairing it, so 40%, the profit that she's making is, the profit is, 40% of 102. Now this is where this is where understanding the concept comes in here. I'm going to erase this part here because we don't need to anyway. So if you want to watch this video go ahead and do that. This is where the concept of understanding this quantitative comparison. The reason why these questions are called quantitative comparison is because you're given two quantities in the two column and you're being asked to simply compare the two quantities. Nobody's asking you to compute anything. These questions are not called quantitative computation. They are called comparison. Just compare them. So 40% of 102, we know that, we know that, we know that 40% of 100 is 40. 40% 40 of 100 is 40. Therefore, therefore, 40% 40 of 102, 40% 40 of 102, whatever the hell it is, it's got to be more than 40. How do we write more than 40? You see, I put equal sign there. It's got to be more than 40. This is how you write it. This means something more than 40. So what this is now is 40% of 102 equals something more than 40 with a plus sign on the top, something more than 40. What exactly that is, is a waste of time. Don't try to figure out a precise figure for 40% of 102. It's not worth it. Nobody's asking us for that. So 40% of 102 is going to be more than 40. Therefore, something more than 40 plus 102 is going to be something more than 142. And that's our column A. Column A we just established whatever it is is something more than 142. What do we say in column B? In column B we have 140. Since column B is 140, in column A we just found figured out it's more than 142. Whatever it is, we, we don't know what it, what exact precise figure 40% of 40% uh, of 102 is. Uh, but whatever it is, is more than 40 dollars, and therefore something more than 40 dollars plus 102 dollars is more than 142 dollars. In this column we have 140 dollars. Therefore, the answer is A. That's it. Although figuring out figuring out figuring out 40% of this amount should not be that difficult. 10% of 102 is $10.20. You just move the decimal, 
and therefore 40 percent is going to be forty dollars and eighty cents. So, but you're not going to put here forty dollars and eighty cents because it serves no purpose. Just put down something more than forty. That's all you need here. These are quantitative comparison. You're not being asked to compute anything. Let's move on to the next one. Next one appears on the following page, on page number 146. And similarly, if you're interested in watching the old video, one never knows, you might get something out of it. If you're interested in watching the old video, just type in, type in this tag, GRE math D16 page 135 and that should that should suffice that should that should pop right up if you just type in the uh, GRE math and even don't don't even have to put the date just put in GRE math and page 135 P135 without any space it should pop right up take a look at this uh, next question on the on the following page the very top of the page on page number 146 we are given a picture. A picture that looks like this. P, Q, R, S, T, and V. And V. And we are being asked to find, uh, compute, compare rather, the area of the shaded region. It says in the picture above, the squares P, Q, R, V, and R, V, R, S, T have length of sight S. So these are squares. So we are told that these are P, Q, R, V is a square with a length of sight 6. Similarly, this is a square with a length of sight 6. We are told that. And we are being asked to figure out the area of this shaded region. Well, there are two ways uh, we can go about it. It's again, it's a very straightforward. Po In case you're curious, the previous problem that I just finished uh, taping, that, that, that we just finished doing actually, on the previous page, on number one, on page 145, 94% uh, of the people, 94% of the people who took the exam had no problem with it. It was a very straightforward question. This one that, this one that we're doing right now is also straightforward. 75% uh, of people, 75% of people got it right, one quarter missed it, but the vast majority of the people had no problem. There are two ways you can go about it. One is to straightforward one half base times height, one half base times height, and you can treat this as a base. We can treat Q to P, Q to P as a base, in which case it is six. So it's one half base, which is six times height, which will be Q to S, which is our height, which of course is 12. So we could have treated this as a, as, as a base and that as a height or vice versa. It makes no difference. The reason it makes no difference is because the two quantities are being multiplied. Therefore, if the two quantities are being multiplied and if you have a right angle triangle, it doesn't matter whether I call this side base and that side height or whether I call this side base and treat this as a height, it makes no difference because we are multiplying the two quantities. If the two quantities are being if the two quantities are being multiplied or added, the order doesn't matter. So that's it. So the only way to do is now simplify it. We know that we know that half of six is three. So it's just three times twelve, which is thirty-six, which is precisely what what we are given, which is precisely what we are given in the other column, in column number B. And therefore the answer is C. That's all. So this is 36, which is our column A, which is also same as column B. So they equal to each other. The answer is C. That's it. This was one way of doing the problem. If you're interested, not 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 that I'm what I'm about to say is earth shattering. I'm not making that claim. It's not nothing I'm about to say is earth shattering. But there is another way of doing it. In case uh, you're curious, this is not how I did it. The first thing that occurs to me is, let's, let's, let's raise everything, let's do it one more time in a little bit different way. I'm going to raise everything because I need the room. Here's what you do. You see this intersection right here? Let's give it a name. Let's 
of this crescent the intersection of RV and PS as what do you want to call it? Let's first learn the word crescent. Oh boy, just give me a second. I, I'm, I want to find out when we learn this thing. Just give me one second. I'll be right back. This word that I just used, the word was crescent. Do we know what it means? Crescent has two meanings. One is the literal meaning of the word crescent is to baptize somebody in Christianity. That's the literal meaning of the word. Metaphorically, it simply means to give somebody a name, somebody or something a name. If you're interested in learning this word properly, Christian that is, if you're interested in learning this word properly, just like, just like right now we are watching the math video of mine, because we are preparing for the GRE, GMAT or SAT, the other, other ingredient, other most important ingredient to improve your score in the verbal part of the exam is to have a decent vocabulary. And for that reason, I have put together a few videos that will help you improve your vocabulary. So if you're interested in learning the word Christian along with a whole bunch of other words, just type in, just type in uh, vocabulary. Just type in vocabulary. Day 63 along with Keshwani Prep and you will find it right away and you will learn the word Christian, which means, as I said, to name something, metaphorically speaking, as opposed to baptizing it, which is the literal meaning of the word. So let's christen it. Let's give this intersection a name. What should we call it? We have P, Q, R, S, T, B. Let's, let's be wild. Let's call it W. Let's call it W. Now what I want you to do is, listen carefully, what I want you to do is pick up, pick up the triangle, pick up the triangle W, R, S. W R S. Pick it up. Okay, pick up the triangle W R S. Pick it up and flip it. And flip it. I hope I spelled the flip out properly. I don't know if there's two L's or one L. Flip it and put it on top of triangle. P W V. So it should be W because W may corresponds with W. W and R will fall on where V is, and and uh, S will fall where P is. W V P. One more time. Here's what I want you to do. I'm making a big fuss about it because if you see it right away, then of course you don't need this explanation. So I want you to pick it up and flip it. And if you pick it up and flip it, you should be able to see that this triangle. W R S is the exact identical triangle as this triangle W V P. It will fit right in. It will fit right in. It will fill up this area. It will fill up this area right here. Therefore, what we are dealing with here is a simple square. A six by six square is what we have here. Uh, a six by six square is what we have here. Voila! Well, 6 by 6 square, of course the area is 36, 6 times 6, that's all it is. You don't have to go through this mumbo jumbo of half time base, half base time side that we did before. That was a very traditional, very orthodox, very classical, very academic way of doing it. This was a little bit, a little bit of a, little bit of a funky way of doing it, if you will. I will see you tomorrow on day number 28 where we'll do the problem that you see about the property tax number three. All right, bye now.